I'm sure you've seen the pictures of burned and melted 4090s on Reddit already, but since I finally have my hands on one of these, I think we should talk about it in a bit more detail and explain what's going on here. For a bit of context, let's talk about power connectors. The PCIe slot on its own can deliver up to 75 watts of power to any add-in card. That's why you can find lower end GPUs that don't need any power connections and why things like network cards don't need any extra power either. Of course, for higher end cards, well, they need some extra juice. So enter the six pin PCIe power connector. This is a universal standard that can add an extra 75 watts of power to the GPU through its three pairs of 12 volt and ground pins. Nice and simple. Then GPUs started needing more power. This HD 6870 was a mid tier card, but even it needed two six pin connections with the top end GPUs, especially the dual GPU cards needing up to four connections. It all got a bit silly really. So in comes the eight pin standard. The A pin set is a superset of the six pin, meaning that any eight pin connectors are all backwards compatible with six pin, thanks to the extra two pins being, well, optional. Strangely, those two pins don't actually supply any extra power. There are just two more ground pins, which basically act as sort of sense pins to tell both the GPU and the power supply that the power supply supports offering 150 watts through the existing six pins and that the GPU actually needs that much. Perfect, we, we couldn't possibly need more than 225 watts, right? Right? Yeah, that, that didn't, uh, didn't last very long, did it? Uh, now, it's pretty common for uh, high-end cards to offer three or sometimes even four of these eight pin connectors, in this case for a total of 525 watts of total power. And the new 4090, like I said, can benefit from four. So Nvidia thought that it was time to change things up again, which to be honest, I, I totally get. I mean, we've been using this eight pin for over a decade at this point, so a, a new and improved solution was about due. And that is where we run into problems. So instead of coming up with, say, another superset design, say with an extra four pin block that's also optional for a total of 12 pins, but still with the option to run it as a, an eight or a six pin, well, Nvidia decided to use a, a wholly different connector. I mean, okay, I get it. Having two optional blocks per connector is, is, is pretty silly, really. And I'm sure that you could streamline that process with a, a new, nicer connector. Sadly, the connector they chose was this. A 12 pin plus four sense pins separately that is considerably smaller than the existing connectors. Here's a look at a 12 pin connector of the same size as a standard 8 pin. This is what Be Quiet uses on their power supply side connections to supply up to 300 watts to the two 8 pin connectors that are on the same cable. Now compare that to the size of Nvidia's 12 VHPWR connection. It looks like it's been shrunk in the wash. It's comically small and that's not all. Instead of offering just a, a standard doubling of the power from 150 watts to 300 watts, like we saw with the six to eight pin connectors, Nvidia is now running up to 600 watts through this. Yeah, that's right. The tiny thing is meant to run four times as much power as a standard eight pin connection. Even if you pretend that this was the, the larger pin size connector, Running four times the power through six pairs of wires seems a, a little much, but this isn't the larger connector. In fact, I measured the pin sizes here and found that the pins were around half a millimeter with three millimeter pitch. That's the distance between pins compared to one millimeter pins on the standard eight pin connector. That means the pins themselves are just a quarter of the size while being asked to draw four times more current through them. 
In fact, working out how much current each pin is drawing here, 600 watts divided by 12 volts gets you a current of 50 amps. 50 amps divided by the six for a number of, of pairs of wires gives 8.3 amps per pair. Now, looking up the current rating for 0.5 millimeter wires from JST, one of the major standards and connector makers, they say that 0.51 millimeter wires should only carry two amps safely. Oh, that's um, not great. Now, it is worth noting that that rating is for wires, not connectors, although for 0.5 millimeter square wires, which is what these pins are, they aren't meant to exceed five amps. It's also worth noting that the tiny wires that come out of these adapters apparently need to be 1.3 millimeters in diameter to safely carry 8.3 amps. Now, I should also note that this 12, uh, 12 volt high power connector is actually made by Amphenol, and they say the connector is rated for up to 12 amps per pin, meaning NVIDIA does have a good safety margin here, but Compare that to JST and Molex, who for the same three millimeter pitch, say they'd only want four amps or best case 6.5 amps. That's definitely something to keep in mind. But do you know what? I've got a 4090 and a connector right here. Let's test it and see if it blows up. I've attached some K-type thermal probes to the connector and left one in ambient air for reference. I'll fire up Furmark to get the GPU pumping all 450 watts it needs through this tiny little connector, and oh wow, that's that's jumping up pretty quick. I'm, I'll speed up the footage here a, a touch, but I mean it went from 30 to 40, 45, oh, 50. It's it, it's gonna it's gonna blow. Oh my! No, I'm just kidding. Uh, this is actually fairly normal. Remember that this connector is strapped to a board that is outputting 450 watts of heat, which is soaking into the PCB and into the connector. In fact, in all of my testing with the 4090 so far, I haven't had any problems, and I honestly don't expect to. But that doesn't mean that I think this new connector isn't a problem. Here is a bit of conjecture for you. You know that Reddit post? Well, the OP also linked a picture of how they had their GPU set up, which was in a vertical mount. The cable was pulled sideways out of the card. And well, if I look at my connector and I, I give it a bit of a wiggle, there's a fair bit of play side to side. You can actually see the connector lifting up a little with very little force on the cables. If you look at the burn pattern of the, the Reddit post, you'll notice that it's mostly the outside pins. My speculation, and I should make it clear it's just that, is that because the connector is so short compared to the standard 8-pin, I mean the insertable length, I, I, I could not say that, uh, is just 6.5 millimeters compared to over 9 millimeters on the standard 8-pin, and it's so wide as well and, uh, compared to its depth and the high power and the tiny pins, any level of bad contact will cause considerable resistance and therefore quite a lot of heating, potentially to the point of burning the connector out. Does that mean that we need to avoid vertical mounting these cards then? Well, not specifically. I think any position that stresses the connector, especially side to side, should be avoided regardless of the card's orientation. The fact that the adapters are, are so short and need three or four 8-pin connections isn't helping the situation, although I would expect when power supplies can offer the 12 volt high power connections, that might be less of a problem. But even with these adapters, I don't think that many people will have significant problems with these connectors. Although considering that we're only a, a week or two after launch and we've seen multiple reports of failures, I would worry about what will happen in a, a few months or even a few years down the line. Will these prematurely fail compared to standard 8-pin cards? Will warranties be honoured a, a year or two's time? And I still don't think that this 12 VHPWR connector is a good choice, nor the, the future of GPU power connectors. The power connector shouldn't be something that you should even need to consider as a, a potential failure point. 
it should really be the, the most reliable part on the card, but I can't say that this connector is. I'm not sure that I would be comfortable having a card with that connector in my system, although it is worth noting that part of the problem here is that these are 4090s. They are drawing three quarters of the power that this connector is designed to handle compared to say a, a 4080 that's more likely to need more like 300 watts instead of 450. And so it's drawing more like four amps per wire, which is much more in line with what JST or Molex would recommend for connectors of that size. But those are my thoughts and I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think about the 12 VHPWR connector? Is it something you think is going to continue to be a problem and you know, we're going to see more of these melting and fires coming up? Or is this something more just, you know, a, a couple of faulty units some bad sort of locations? Feel free to let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos from me, including plenty more videos with this entire system from CyberPower with the 4090 and all of AMD's new Ryzen 7000 series CPUs, and of course comparisons to the Intel ones as well, feel free to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. You can also check out plenty of other videos on the N cards, including stuff like the 13th gen chips if you're interested. And uh, yeah, if you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos, then feel free to do so through YouTube itself and become a YouTube member or Patreon and become a patron instead. Pick up out of your t-shirt like this one or use some of the affiliate links that are listed in the description, including uh, Amazon. Uh, this server system isn't an affiliate link, but I will link it in the description if you're interested. And yeah, otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.